السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد علی ربانی آئی ایم ڈیموسٹریٹر ہے اینڈ پارٹ ٹو ریزیڈنٹ آف ایف سی بی ایس اکیڈمی ان سی ایم ایس ملتان سو ٹوڈے ٹاپک آف آر ایم بی او پریکٹیکل ول بی مز اینٹریز اینڈ جی اے ٹی مز اینٹریز آف اسمال جی اے ٹی بائی دا اینڈ آف دس لیکچر یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ڈسکرائب دا فارمیشن آف ڈارسل اینڈ ویزل مز اینٹری ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین انٹرا پیریٹونیل اینڈ ایکسٹرا پیریٹونیل آرگن اینڈ کوریلیٹ دا چینجز ان مز اینٹری with gut relation and explain the formation of lesser and greater peritoneal sacs. So we will uh, give a brief discussion. First, uh, you should know the concept of peritoneum. A famous example is punching the balloon. So let's uh, assume that this uh, whole balloon, this organ is the peritoneum and uh, you want uh, an organ to enter into it. So this is a simple organ. Let's see if an organ, it moves into the peritoneum a part of the peritoneum will get attached to the surface of the uh, organ and uh, the rest of the original wall will remain its in its original place so let's cut it in half and see it we'll see the part of the peritoneum that is here in circling the viscera that is known as viscera layer of peritoneum and this part of the layer that is in its original place that is known as parietal layer of peritoneum and between them here is the reflection where the visceral layer of peritoneum becomes continuous with the parietal layer and another thing to focus on is that the organ did not actually enter the cavity of the peritoneum it is actually outside the cavity but it took the fold of peritoneum within it to the cavity so uh, this is it then uh, this can be shown in this picture here so this organ enters here this is the extra peritoneal organ and when it enters this is considered to be intraperitoneal organ so intraperitoneal organ is completely surrounded by visceral layer of peritoneum and it is attached to the wall or attached to the parietal layer with the help of this layer that is known as mesentery okay now the point to remember is that the organ is not actually within the peritoneal cavity it is within the cavity it is technically outside the peritoneal cavity covered by the visceral layer of peritoneum and this layer that mesentery it is always two layered and it gives a pathway for the blood vessels of the organ to reach the um, reach it so uh, you should differentiate between intraperitoneal organ and extraperitoneal organ the organ surrounded by visceral layer of peritoneum joined to the posterior wall with the help of mesentery that is known as intraperitoneal organ the organ that is partially covered by the peritoneum mainly on its interior surface or on one surface it may be anterior or superior or it may be covered by more than one surfaces even two or three surfaces but if it is not completely engulfed by it it will be considered extra peritoneal and extra peritoneal organ can further be divided into retro peritoneal if they are situated behind the peritoneum and sub peritoneal if they are situated beneath the peritoneum and if the peritoneum if the on organ was originally intra peritoneal but Uh, after some rotation it came like this and it uh, came into the contact with the posterior wall and then the mesentery got absorbed in such situation that organ is known as secondarily retroperitoneal secondary retroperitoneal organ so embryologically speaking in the beginning of fetal life the whole of the gat had a dorsal mesentery so it had different names in the point of stomach up to the uh, first part of the duodenum it was known as dorsal mesogastrium from the duodenum all the way to the uh, transverse colon if you, that is mid gut it was known as mesentery proper or uh, mesentery small intestine it is basically considered to be from the ileum and jejunum and then uh, the whole of the large gut it uh, was considered to be having dorsal mesocolon and each of the embryological part of the gut had its own blood supply within this uh, mesentery the celiac artery in uh, dorsal mesogastrium there is square mesenteric artery in mesentery proper there is dorsal mesocolon contained in inferior mesenteric artery in addition to this dorsal mesentery throughout the gut there is additional ventral mesentery in case of the uh, stomach and lower part of the abdominal part of the esophagus this is known as ventral mesentery ventral mesentery develops within it this large organ the liver and after the development of liver the lesser this uh, ventral mesentery is divided into two parts the part that remains between the stomach and the liver that is known as lesser omentum 
and the part that remains between liver and the interior abdominal wall that is known as falciform ligament. So for now on we will be using the words falciform ligament and lesser momentum to avoid any confusion. So uh, this is what for the foregut. The gut is surrounded by the mesentery visceral and it has both dorsal and ventral mesentery and in case of mid gut and hind gut we only have dorsal mesentery. So uh, we did that. Same are shown again and again in the same picture. Okay, here's the important part. This foregut, foregut mesentery, we just saw that the stomach had a dorsal mesentery and the ventral mesentery. And in front of the stomach, uh, this is known as lesser momentum, this is known as falciform ligament, in between them there is liver. And in bet behind the stomach, there is development of spleen within this dorsal mesentery. Now, this is a situation that is before uh, rotation. Then uh, there is a rotation of the stomach chiefly due to the growth of the liver. When there is a rotation of the stomach, this anterior margin of the stomach is pulled to the right. This posterior margin is pushed to the left and this left surface is pushed to the front and this right surface is pushed to the back. So this is now the new situation after rotation. Let me uh, elaborate it further by this picture. Now uh, this picture, if we only take the cut end, we will get this picture in the next slide. Yes. Now this is the falciform ligament, liver, lesser momentum, stomach and whole of this is dorsal mesentery or dorsal mesogastrium. A dorsal mesogastrium further has a development of spleen and pancreas within it. As the liver grows, as the liver continue to grow in this direction towards the right, it continues to rotate the stomach also. So liver now occupies most of the right hypochondrium and as it grows like this, it mostly it fuses with the lateral and posterior walls. It fuses all the way like here. When it fuses here, now here is this space that is enclosed within it. On a one side there is liver, on another side there is spleen and the two ligaments of spleen, gastrosplenic ligament and splenorenal ligament, in other words linorenal ligament. Another thing you will notice that here the dorsal mesentery, dorsal mesogastrium, it was attaching to the midline. Now after the folding, this came to lie parallel to the this posterior wall and they fused with one another. So here you can see they fused with one another and this fusion, the posterior margin of the fusion, it became absorbed and this peritone, uh, pancreas, the pancreas that was original intraperitoneal, it became secondarily retroperitoneal. So here this space that is being totally formed now that is known as lesser sac or lesser peritoneal sac. It has stomach, lesser momentum, gastrolinal ligament in front, liver and inferior vena cava on right side, spleen with its ligaments on the left side and posterior abdominal wall behind. So it can be visualized in this particular video you can see. So this is how the stomach rotates and lesser sac is formed. So when stomach rotates you can see that anterior margin becomes the right margin, posterior margin becomes the left margin and same happened with the surfaces. Let's incorporate uh, more, incorporate liver into the picture. As liver grows, spleen grows, this is the fusion of the liver with the posterior wall known as bare area of the liver and this shaded portion is now called the lesser sac or omental bursa. There is lesser omentum. Then there is gastrosplenic ligament, and that's it. Okay, now look at it uh, from the uh, comparatively 3D perspective. So looking at it from behind, beneath, you will first we will repeat the uh, folding process. This is basically due to the stomach and duodenum folding. The same process is shown from below in a little 3D perspective. Now, here is the interesting phenomena that is occurring. This part of the uh, greater momentum, this part of the greater momentum, this is not an open ending, this is not actually a cut, uh, this is actually a closed space, and this is not great lesser momentum. So, this is the cut end of the greater momentum. So, you see, this is actually, if we uh, 
make all of the other structure and complete this this is a part of the duodenum this is the part where the terminal part of lesser momentum is attached this is the free margin of lesser momentum giving rise to an, and this is the second part of duodenum this gives rise to this is epiploic foramen we discussed in gross anatomy we will discuss it in detail and this is the only connection of the lesser momentum lesser sac with the greater sac through the epiploic foramen this is the cut end of the greater momentum this is the free end uh, if the greater momentum is completely drawn cut end is not drawn you can see now this is the whole lesser sac the lesser sac was actually not uh, closed open from here so this is the lesser sac only entry is from this epiploic foramen and the opening is it is behind the lesser momentum stomach and the greater momentum and as the greater momentum extends downwards it takes this the greater momentum as it extends downwards it takes the cavity with it uh, let's see it in the next picture as the lesser momentum yeah momental bursa greater mental bursa it grows downwards in front of the tarsus colon and uh, semicolon it takes the space with it let's see in the picture here you can see that it is the out pouching that we started in the previous video now see what happens if we continue it lesser momentum this is the lesser momentum between liver and the stomach this is the greater momentum it's out pouching part that is going in front of the transverse colon this is the transverse colon and this is the mesentery of the transverse colon transverse mesocolon and this is the posterior abdominal wall as it grows it grows in an apron like pattern into the uh, in front of the transverse colon downwards for going you can see that it is now a four layer structure anterior wall double layer posterior wall is double layer and still now the lesser sac is continuing all the way down to the fold now this posterior double fold of the lesser uh, this greater momentum it fuses with the transverse colon transverse mesocolon they come together and they fuse with one another and with time the intervening layers are absorbed and they are inseparable from one another and another thing the layers of the greater momentum beyond the transverse colon they fuse with one another and the so the space does not in usually usually it does not extend beyond the transverse colon in some people the fusion is, is complete and it may go beyond but in most of the people it does not go beyond transverse colon because the layers had been fused so this is uh, the lesser sac formation it is made of uh, this lesser momentum stomach and anterior wall of the greater momentum so this was about the mental bursa it has been shown in langman by these pictures so you can follow them i hope it makes sense now and this is the adult structure now you can only see the lesser momentum it's free and epiploic foramen and uh, the greater momentum overlying the uh, transverse colon and extended down in an apron like fashion then there is a rotation of midgut in midgut what happens is that this is basically the region of stomach part of duodenum and this is the loop of intestine that goes into the hernia it protrude out into the umbilicus during the period of physiological umbilical hernia and at that time it undergoes counter clockwise 90 degree rotation at this goes out and further continues and performs 180 degree further rotation as it comes back so there is a total of 270 degree counter clockwise rotation when it goes counter clockwise rotation occurs you can see that sorry let me play it again for you this is 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree when 270 degree now you can see that how this uh, rotation uh, makes adult structure uh, the way they are so now when a counterclockwise rotation occurs the distal part of the gut that will ultimately form the in red color shown the hind gut in blue color show the mid gut part of the uh, uh, colon they come in front of the trans uh, this small intestine this green color is shown for the ileum and jejunum yellow color is shown for the duodenum green color is shown for the stomach so this is how the transverse colon come to lie in front of the transverse colon uh, it comes to lie in front of the duodenum then the duodenum get absorbed in the posterior wall it becomes secondary retroperitoneal and the transverse colon lie in front of the duodenum and it becomes the intraperitoneal so let me play that video again so after that we will move further protruding out in one hernia 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree counterclockwise direction if we swing from above and transverse colon comes in front of the duodenum
so and this is all about the pen, uh, formation of the peritoneum uh, its pores and uh, its relation to the rotation of the intestine and gut uh, you uh, will discuss it much more in detail in the main lectures uh, for the embryological practical perspective we will have assignment of three uh, pictures this is assignment number one we have to draw three pictures i have given the reference of langman your assignment number two and picture assignment number three you have to draw all of these three pictures in your embryological practical copy if you don't have that draw it on a plain piece of paper and when you come back to college inshallah you will uh, paste them into your copies thank you so much these are the links of the videos that have been used if you have any further queries please uh, post comment uh, below the post in uh, google for google classroom okay then allah Hafiz.